Well, hello again. This is Joe from My Repair Electronics, and we're back with the Hamag uh, component tester on the Rigel oscilloscope, the uh, DS1054 oscilloscope. And right now we're running it uh, normal mode, just uh, regular time base uh, mode. <clears throat> so to get this to work, you have to have an external uh, uh, X input. Um, now the this Rigel scope doesn't uh, outwardly have a uh, a jack for it. So, but they do have a way of changing the time base. And you uh, go to the menu here, and here's the time base, right? Uh, you change this over to X Y. So we're changing it from Y T, which is time. Uh, and Y axis up and down to XY, which is going to be uh, going across and then up and down. And hey, look at that. So um, then one of the other things you do need to do uh, for this to work properly is because uh, it's a bit slow when you uh, changing things. See, I just pulled the transistor out and it's taken a while to get to the, the line here. So, pop that back in. Get it in the socket. It's even better. Yeah, see how long it's taking? So, um, we want to change the memory depth of the scope to minim minim minimum depth. So, we'll get select 6K. And that speeds up the uh, the acquisition, since we're not using as much memory. So, you change it. So, see, it, you change it, it responds much quickly, more quickly, much much more quicklier. So, that's how that's working. So, um, let me get uh, some probes, and I'll show you a few other things. What I got here, fresh, fresh out of the package, never used, brand new Pomona, Pomona probe. See that? That should fit here. Let's hope it does. Yep. And guess all some nice clip leads. Very nice. Woohoo! So. Yeah, I know. I'm getting excited over a pro bleed. Amazing. Okay, so anyway, let's get this in the front foreground a little better. So we can thus and take this out. We can grab a diode. So I'll slap one of them into our clip leads. Slap the other side on. And boom. This is a Zener diode. It's about seven and a half volts. So it's uh, showing the forward breakdown voltage uh, just like the transistor. So if we reverse polarity, what do you suppose will happen? Nothing too spectacular except changes direction. Okay, so um, that's only because the polarity is, is, is reversed. So now, uh, what's up is down, what's down is up. And what else did I want to show you? The standard diode. So here's the standard uh, 1N4005. See that? So any standard diode junction is going to do the same. It's just going to go uh, and cross over like that. Okay. And uh, hold on a second. So now 
what if there was a resistor, a 750 ohm resistor, in line with that diode, what would happen? Well, that's what happens. So this slanted line is the resistance the 750 ohms. I'll show you that by removing the diode. Okay. So there's our resistance value. Uh, 750 ohms is causing it to kind of angulate a little bit. So if you were testing in circuit and you had that pattern, then you'd know that you had a, a resistor tied in with your diode. Likewise goes for capacitors. Uh, um, let's try a 22. This is a, this is a non-polarized, I believe. Okay, so there's a bit of an ellipse, or a lizaceous pattern, if you will. Or you can also try uh, increasing or decreasing the current. Uh -huh. So we were on minimum current. If you go min, medium, max, that will show different uh, pattern on the, uh, on the cap. So let's see something. Let's go... And see how if we go to full display, we want to see the waveforms and the scope pattern. So here we are. So for in order for you to get an ellipse, a, a, a lizaceous pattern an ellipse, you have to have your uh, everything has to be phase correct. So. Um, and it sort of looks that way, but let's open it up a little more. Actually, it's not, isn't it? So, you can clearly see that it is not phase correct. And that's, well, that could be because, obviously, it's not a perfect circle. So, um, to get a perfect circle, yeah, so that's what happens, is the, um, Depending on the, vo the amount of current going through, uh, changes the uh, phasing of the waveform and thus changes how it shows up on the screen. So now, now the bottom peak is over to the right, the bottom peak is over to the left. Uh, so I'm sure if I poke around a little more, I'd find a, a cap that might give us a more perfect circle. Let's try 33. There's a little tantalum 33. Let's see what happens with this. Okay. Let's go to max. And that's closer, but yeah, it's kind of bottoming out in a strange way here. Maybe it's uh, my polarity. No, it just switches position. So, yeah. Yeah, whatever. So, that basically shows you the phase relationship with respect to uh, a lizaceous pattern. Again, if we were doing something like sending audio in here, which I would like to do at some point, and get some of those cool uh, waveforms to show up, uh, then um, to get a perfect circle, both waveforms would have to be exactly at the same respective position. The peaks would have to line up exactly. So anyway, what else can I say about it? It's a, the Hameg, it's an interesting little add-on from a German company. Hameg is a German, uh, electronics and scope maker. Uh, I do believe Dave Jones actually uh, fixing 
an old Hamag oscilloscope that he picked up for a mere nineteen dollars. You know, not a the most well known company around, at least not in the states anyway. Uh, but definitely uh, a player out there, and uh, I do believe they're still around. So yes, you can indeed use a uh, component tester like this on an oscilloscope such as this. Now, I'm going to give you a preview of what's coming next. Uh, by the way, if you think this is a curve tracer, well, technically maybe yeah, but not really. I've got a curve tracer, and I'm going to give you a little preview of it in a second. It's an old Heath kit, and we're going to go into this on the next video. Ain't she a beauty? Yes, indeed. Uh, this bad boy will throw some current onto a, tra onto a transistor. But we'll go into it later. Just a teaser. So thanks for watching. Go out there and break something today so you can fix it.